Okay, so, chat. Uh, much like the original Mummy, where we start off in ancient Egypt and 2000 plus, you know, BC, we're jumping another thousand years back before that. Now we're in the year 3067 BC, and people smell something cooking. And who's cooking that shit? It's The Rock. Except he's not known as The Rock here, chat. He's known as the Scorpion King. And The Rock's like, hey... Guys, I just want to conquer everything. I'm going to raise an entire army, and we're just going to go after the Egyptian people. You, you with me? And they just go and go after those Egyptian people, uh, chap. Just trying to conquer them. He's got this big old army. He just like, fuck that. You are, you are not taking everything that we have. And they repel him, chat. They kick his ass. They defeat his army, and they're, they're sent into exile into the desert, just wandering to chat. And one by one by one, they're dropping like flies. They're dying. And The Rock, he is the last one to drop. But before he does so, he offers... He, uh, by the way, let me tell you this, chat. So, during this opening sequence, which is, which is a, you know, a, a battle of some kind... Oh! Mr. Pancake, thank you so much for the 10 biddies! No more. No more what? <laughs> Don't you want to hear what The Rock is cooking? Don't you want to hear that? Joey the Jedi, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. I'm going to tell you uh, this, chat. This was the first movie that The Rock ever did. And you can fucking tell, because he is absolutely terrible in this film. Because he's basically, I mean, he's, I mean, he, first of all, he's not speaking English in this film. He's speaking wh whatever language he is, but he can't even sell that. <laughs> even that, he's stumbling over it. It sounds stilted. I mean, you're like, you're a warrior about to conquer a goddamn uh, city-state. You should be, ah, just like going crazy and shit. He's like, ah, like, it's like, you're not, you're not selling it. Like, you, the extras behind you. Who people don't even know who they are to this day. That was like their one role they did. They're acting better than The Rock throughout this entire sequence. And it's like Jesus. And, and, and the thing is, the, the reason why he was put in this movie was because he was The Rock. Because he was one of the most popular uh, uh, world wrestling stars at the time. And that's why he also greenlighted the sequence. Like, oh, maybe we can spin off with him. And I'll tell you this, chat. He's much better in The Scorpion King. He clearly took some acting lessons. He took the criticism. And he improved upon himself. And that's great. But here, he fucking sucks. And he can't sell a line to save his ass, even if you can't understand what the line is. And so, chat, we find him. All his troops are dropping. The Rock, he was just about to drop. But he's like, I got one. I'm going to pull one thing out of my ass, though. Anumus, I beseech you, please give me your armies and I uh, to conquer uh, all of my enemies, and I will give you my soul and serve you forever. And Nubis is like, sounds good, man. Here, eat this scorpion, you get my army. And so the rock, he just, mu but scorpion, grass scorpion, chat. And stand up, he's like, ah, 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 ah. but he eats it, chat. He munches on the CGI scorpion. And he's like, whoo, I feel pretty good. And then, chat, the, the armies of Anubis rise. And they're basically jackals. They look like Anubis. You know, and they're all CGI. They don't look good at all. And, you know, fucking The Rock's like, oh, I'm going to go conquer Egypt. And he does so, Chad. He's conquering, he's destroying city after city. He's having a fucking blast. He's just, <laughs> he's just laughing, Chad. And he was just, well, that is, uh, that's it. Uh, deal's a deal. I helped conquer your enemies. Now you serve me forever. And he sucks The Rock's assets from his body, Chad. And now he has served Anubis for nearly 4,000 years. And now we skip to present day. Thank God, because I could not stand watching The Rock any more than that, Chad. Even even when he has no dialogue, he's terrible in this scene. It's just not good. Oh, boy. So, mm. now, Chad, we're fine. This uh, uh, this little uh, precocious kid, and he's wandering the halls of this tomb, Chad. And who does he see just, like, silhouetted in this fucking tomb? It's goddamn Brendan Fraser, Chad. It's, uh, what's his name, O'Connell? This is Rick O'Connell, Chad, from the original movie. Oh, Dark Slate, thank you. Anubis sucks the rock. He does, man. Slurps him right up. That sweet essence. Rock doesn't stand a chance. And so, chat, we fucking see Brendan Fraser. He's still in. He comes upon this kid. And the kid's like, oh, he's all British and shit. He sounds like fucking Oliver from Oliver the Exclamation Point. You know, who can't sing or anything like that. He's, oh, oh, dad. oh, my God. Father, you're scary. We learned it. Oh, my God. The little boy, the little British street urchin is the son of Brendan Fraser. And he's like, listen, uh, Alex, you know, your mom and I, his mom, is it Evie? Chat, we don't know yet, but we soon will. We'll soon, we, we'll learn soon enough. Like, listen, your mom and I, were working on this tomb over here. Why don't you just go wait outside where we told you to wait outside. Don't cause any trouble. Work on your mousetraps. Why don't you just murder a few rats, okay? I'm sure that won't psychologically damage you whatsoever. And the, the Alex goes, okay, Dad. And they fucking wonders off. Oh, 
Chris Ayers, thank you so much. Other buddies, by the way, I checked the first movie, mainly takes place in 1926, and this one takes place in 1983, and now it's supposed to be a ah, whatever. <laughs> Why, whatever. You, you, you coming in there <laughs> undercutting me, Chris Ayers, but I appreciate the hundred biddies. I can't stay mad at you. How dare you, Chris? No, here's the thing if I get something wrong, I always tell you this. I always tell you this. If I fuck up, that's why I have you right here, right now with me. Because I'm going to do that a lot, especially when I'm uh, drinking. So please do correct away. I'm probably, I'm sometimes I'm not going to see until like a half hour later. So please do fill in the gaps for me, chat. I might miss something. So the little street urchin, he wanders back, chat, uh, to murder some rats. That's probably not going to, you know, help him in the future. But then, chat, we find ourselves with Evie. Evie, she's Rachel Weiss looking hot as ever. I mean, just drop dead gorgeous. And she's just dusting off a tomb and everything like that. And then we got Brendan Fraser coming, and they're just fucking smooching already, Chad. They're just happy to be there. Brendan Fraser, he's like, I'm a little, you know, I feel a little nervous. Evie's like, God, oh, don't worry about it. what's the worst can that can happen. He's like, the worst that can happen. Do you not remember eight, maybe ten possible years? I don't know how long ago, but when we fought a goddamn mummy and tried to destroy the world, she's like, that only happens once in a lifetime. It's like, ah, I don't want to risk it. She's like, listen, uh, let's open this big, uh, you know, big old uh, door. And here's your hammer and chisel. And he's like this little dinky, you know, hammer, little dinky chisel. He's like, I, I can't, I can't. All right, fine. We'll do it your way. And she hands him this big old crowbar, chat. And he's like, this is more my style. He just fucking whacks that ancient door, chat. Fucking crumbles. It's like, that was probably 3,000 plus years of Egyptian history right there. You just fucking knocked it over. All right, fine, whatever. And they go in, chat. What do they find? They find all this, the, the symbols. They find a gold idol of the Scorpion King. And Evie, she's like... Oh my God, that's, I thought that was only myth. You know, there's never been any evidence of an actual scorpion king. Let's see what he's cooking. I smell something. They, so they go deeper into the temple chat. And then Evie just fucking has a vision. And she sees all this weird shit. She sees this, this, this female figure walking towards her. She's like, I don't know what the hell this is. And then it dissipates, Chad, because her husband just destroyed. He just walked, just fucking, you know, uh, Brent Fridge just waddling in and just going over to where he sees the shiny shit. And he's like, what's wrong with you? Because she's like doing this to the torch, like trying to activate it again. It's like, just stop, stop doing that. He's like, I, Rick, I think I just had a vision. Listen, I, I know that you're having your, your woman problems right now. You're having the vapors. But now's not the time, Evie. He was very sexist back in the day, Chad. Very sexist. And so she's like, ah, she, she, goes, she goes past him, Chad. And they start... You know, they start digging, they start brushing things and everything like that. Meanwhile, we cut back to outside, and little Alex Chad, he's just murdering those rats. He's built quite a contraption. It looks very ominous, and they should probably get him some type of psychiatric help chat. But in the 1930s, that was kind of frowned upon by a lot of families at the time. So he probably won't get that, and he'll probably become a serial killer later on. But we, don't, we haven't gotten to that movie yet. So, but chat, Alex is distracted. Because he hears some voices, some 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 also cockney accented voices, and these two British guys, and uh, I think I Egyptian man, I imagine I'm gonna say Egyptian man. They're walking in chat, and you can tell they're the bad guys. They got the bad guy outfits. You got they're kind of they're a little slow. They already got their fucking guns pulled out, and they're like calling. They're calling for Brendan Fraser. Is anybody home? Alex like okay, my f flight or flight instincts are kicking in. I'm gonna go hide. And so they're searching everywhere, chat. And, and the main British guy, the little, the little chubber, I call him Chubbs. Chubbs, he's like, all right, you two stay here and start looking. And I'm going to go find Brendan Fraser and uh, Rachel Weiss. And then, you know, the, you got the, 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 the guy, looks like, looks like, like, Stephen Merchant's, like, shorter brother, I want to say. So you got, like, the Stephen Merchant-looking guy, and you got the guy with the turban. And his whole thing, chat, his whole character dynamic is just like, this place is cursed. And that's all he says. That's a running joke. He says it about three times in the film. Uh, I, second time I don't remember, and the third time I definitely do remember, and I'll let, I'll bring that up next time. And so Alex is like, "Well, I'm basically a street urchin slash serial killer in the making, so I'm just gonna fuck with these guys." And so he has a slingshot chat, which I hate slingshots. You should not give your children slingshots. And he just starts firing them at the at the guys, particularly the Stephen Merchant looking guy. Fucking hits him in the head right in the eye ah! just start screaming jack because literally they, they could have poked his eye out and he's just freaking out and the guy's going this place is cursed and then chap he's fucking with him again he hits the british guy in the ass he's like who's hitting me in my ass and he's freaking out and then alex laughs because he's like ah the serial killer instinct is kicking in but then uh the guy was always going about you know this place is cursed he's like ah 
there's a little shit in here. Meanwhile, chat, we cut back to uh, Brendan Fraser and Evie, and they see more of the uh, symbology of the rock, of the Scorpion King, chat. They come upon a box, chat. And she's reading this box. She's like, oh, this must be something to do with the Scorpion King. And Brendan Fraser's like, listen, honey, I know you love all this shit, but you were just saying you were having visions right now. I don't think it's the best time to start opening the boxes. She's like, don't worry about it. Don't tell me what to do. And she's like, give me that. And she fucking opens a chat. And it's like this really bedazzled uh, golden scorpion bracelet. And she says, that looks awesome. We're going to take that. Meanwhile, the British guy's like, Bleh. The, the, the Chubbs, Mr. Chubbs chat. He's like aiming his gun at him. He's just about to kill him. So he could take the scorpion uh, king bla uh, bracelet. Um, but during all this time, chat, we, uh, the, the, the temple starts shaking. And they're like, ah, oh, shit, what'd you do? What happened? And he was like, I don't know, I don't know. But then she reads the inscription on the fucking box. And it says, whoever shall open this box uh, shall drink uh, the, 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 the water of the Nile. And she says, well, that doesn't sound too bad. And it's like, yeah, too bad. And then while chat, they're, just, they're hightailing over there. Mr. Chubbs, he's running. Alex, he's trying, he's wrestling with the two other guys in the other side of the temple. And of course, when the, when the temple starts shaking, a fucking, the dam just bursts, chat. Like all through the walls, all this water starts coming in and they're being pushed every which way. You got the, the three schmucks, the three stooges, chat. They run out. Alex manages to escape. He's like, oh my God, I know what the fuck's happening. It's not my fault. Meanwhile, chat, we're, we're with uh, Brendan Fraser and Evie and they get sucked by the water. They're getting, you know, every which way at this point. They're above like these bars trying to escape. They just can't get out yet. There's no luck. No luck at all. Meanwhile, chat, we cut back to Alex and uh, he's trying to keep a pillar from destroying the rest of the dig site. The kid, despite his serial killer tendencies, he loves ancient history. He's like, I must preserve this. But it's too late, chat. It's too heavy for him. The fucking pillar hits the wall. But thankfully, thankfully, chat, that wall uh, happened to be the other wall where we have Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss. And so all the water starts pouring out and they start, they go through the wall chat and they're like, oh, we're alive. And Alex is like, listen guys, you know me, but it, this was not my fault. And it wasn't his fault chat. Not this, not this time, not this time. And so chat, then we cut, I believe, uh, to the, what the fuck was the place called chat? Oh no. Ooh. Uh, what was the what was the place that Imhotep was the the burial we're at the we're at the burial ground from the first movie the ancient city of Imhotep chat that's where we are and there, apparently there's people working there uh, we got some bad guys chat you know they're bad guys because they all have matching uniforms they're all wearing red turbans it's like got it red turban guys bad guys understand and so they're excavating something and who do we see among them chat uh, we see uh, Ak so, what's her name Ak Sunamu I'm gonna call him Ak I'm gonna call him Lady Lady Ak. Lady, see, Lady Ak, chat, Lady Ak. Lady Ak's there. It's like, how is she there? You know, she was, she lived like 3,000 years ago. It's the same actress, obviously. What the hell's going on here? And Lady Ak, she's all weird. She's like uh, like a 1930s goth chick, chat. She's all in the black magic and that kind of thing. Loves snakes and shit. And we find out, because she's talking into, what's his name? Uh, Baltus. He's like the leader of this. It's a cult, chat. Red turbans are cult. Uh, part of a cult. Uh, Baltus, he's a guy with a little mustache. You can tell he's evil checks. He's like snidely whiplash mustache. And he's like, hey, we're just here looking for ML Tap. I think the workers found something. And the workers, they've been digging. They've been digging the entire time, chat, for months. And they think that they found him. They found him. And we come to this, like, mound with all the dirt pushed away. But the dirt's kind of just kind of exploding upward. It's like a, a volcano of dirt. It's like, what the hell's down there? And they're, like, they're poking at you. Like, oh, it's so fun. And then, chat, we get a cameo appearance. But, you know, uh, but, you know. Enjoy it because it doesn't last that long. We don't see for the rest of the movie. Chad, they get replaced, sadly. And then the fucking man-eating beetles burst out. And they start eating all the people. It's fun. They go inside their tummies and they're eating them from the inside. And they're like, so many, so, so, someone get, like, so get, gets like a lot of beetles in his tum-tum. And then he just fucking opens his mouth to scream and all the beetles start pouring out, Chad. And it doesn't look good. Honestly, that's, a, that's the big problem with this film, Chad, is that the CGI... I don't know if there is an improvement, but there just feels like there's so much more of it. And because there's so much more of it, they didn't spend enough time on it. And, like, the Beatles just didn't have the same effect on me as they did in the first one. I mean, it's fucked up what's happening. Like, these guys are being eaten alive by fucking Beatles. It's tragic. But it's like, ah, I mean, ah, I've been there, done that. That's why probably why they only had him in this particular scene, chat. But it's okay, because the cult, they came prepare, chat. They got these big old flamethrowers, and they start burning this shit. And they're like, well, he's not in there. But uh, Lady Axe, she's like, you know what? I think he's nearby. And they just, and then people in the workers start screaming. And they're like, oh, they found Imhotep, Chad. Imhotep's looking weird. He's looking really, really gooey. Because he's like kind of in this chrysalis thing. 
Because he remember he fell into the blue the, the black goo from Prometheus at the end of the first mummy. And so he's like in this clear crystalless thing. It's like, I guess that's him. I I can't really tell, but I think it's Imhotep. And like, great, let's fucking bring him back to London. What else do we need? And it's like, oh, we just need the goddamn uh a bracelet of Anubis. But don't worry. Uh, don't worry, I've sent my top men on it. Who are those top men, Chance? The fucking Three Stooges from earlier. It's the two cocky accented guys, the guy that's always going, it's Ghost, and that's pretty much it. They come back to the dig site, and they're saying, yeah, uh, we didn't get it. And you know, the cult guy, Baltus, he's like, what do you mean you didn't get it? It was an easy job. He's like, ah, it was goddamn Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss. He's like, oh, jeez, fuck them. Okay, fine. We'll deal with them. And he's like, don't have to worry about it, man. We're just going to head over to London. We'll get it for you. He's like, no, no, no. You guys are done. We're going to, again, Baltus, he's like, fuck you. You guys are super incompetent. We're going to handle this right now. We're going to go and get the goddamn brace. And we're going to take care of this now. And they're like, all right, fuck it. Okay. And we're going to bring the big old jelly uh, uh, mummy with us too, Imhotep. And we're going to resurrect him in London, chat. And then, chat, we cut back to London. And f funny enough, <laughs> I know I've seen too many movies when I just start to recognize the 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 go-to mansions that Hollywood always uses, because the mansion that uh, the estate that Brendan Fraser and Evie live at is the same mansion that Bruce Wayne has from from Batman Begins. It's the exact same mansion, and I'm like that. Oh, that's kind of cool, but it's like Jesus, this is always the same. <laughs> and you just start recognizing. You've seen this mansion so many times, chat. It's the exact same house. Uh, but again, then again, this took place before Batman, so I guess it was theirs. And then it was taken over by the Wayne family later on. They just moved it away to fucking Gotham City. But uh, Brendan Fraser, he ha he's happy to be home, Chad. He does a mild reference to Indiana Jones here because he has a fedora on and everything. And it's like, I know what you're doing here, Brendan Fraser. You're trying to look like Indiana Jones. And I'll tell you this, Chad. He does. Back in the day, I'll tell you this right now, Chad. It might be an unpopular opinion. But back in the day, Brendan Fraser, like 1999, early 2000s, would have made a solid Indiana Jones. That's basically what he's playing here. He's charming. He's funny. He does a lot of his own stunts. He, I mean, he looks good doing all that. Uh, I mean, he's, and he's a good actor. He's, he's, he's a definitely a good actor. He's just, he picks bad projects. He's like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm all for Brendan Fraser of this time being the next Indiana Jones. Sadly, that time has passed, chap, but I see what he was doing here and I appreciate him for it. And listen, Brent Fraser, he just wants to take it easy. He's done fighting mummies and, you know, outrunning the, the, the River Nile. The Nile River, all that shit. He's like, he just wants to spend some time at home with his family. Evie's like, fuck that. I want to go and find more dangerous shit. Uh, that bracelet, husband, that's connected to a secret oasis. An oasis that is surrounded by nefarious... Oh, she doesn't really sell it that way, Chad. She says, like, it's an oasis. It's beautiful. It's tropical. You're going to love it. And he's like, oh, it sounds so great, honey, but what's the fucking catch? He's like, oh, it's probably it's cursed. Of course it's cursed. All things are cursed with you. And she's like, listen. I'm just going to, you know, slowly take off all my clothes and just use, basically use my body as a bargaining chip and say, you want this? Let's go to the Oasis. He's like, ah, you're so hot. Fine. And he starts smooching, chat. And meanwhile, while they're smooching and doing all the sexy stuff, we cut down to little street urchin, uh, serial killer in the making, Alex, chat. And they, for whatever reason, they gave him the cursed box of the bracelet of Anubis. And he's like, why do you want it? And they're like, not paying attention. They're, they're smooching Chad. He's like, fuck it. And he puts it on, on Chad. Of course, what's the first thing he's going to do? Open it. He opens it, Chad. He's like, that looks really pretty. I'm going to wear that shit. Puts it on himself. Fucking latches onto his hand. He's like, oh, and starts screaming. Chad just like crushing his arm. And then it starts projecting all these images. All these ancient places. And he's like, I don't understand. And I mean, I, I recognize these things because he is intelligent, Chad. He is very much his mother's son. He loves history. Uh, he, he understands Egyptology, architecture. He's like, okay, I recognize all these places. And he's calling, he's like, Mom, Dad, you shy ass fucking shit. And they're like, they're not paying attention to him, chat. And uh, while uh, uh, Brent Fraser and uh, Rachel Weiss are smooching chat, uh, Rachel Weiss, she sees uh, behind um, Brent Fraser, she sees some knickers. She sees some uh, undergarments, chat. It's like, those aren't my knickers. Whose knickers are those? And, and fucking Brendan Fraser's like, Jonathan. Remember Jonathan, chat, the com comedic relief? He's in the movie now. And so we cut to uh, Jonathan, chat, and he's just finished bending, uh, uh, bending, <laughs> bedding this hot blonde woman. He's talking all this shit. He's like, yes, this is my mansion, and but this is a, and this is my scepter, where I, which I use to defeat the mummy. And he's like, he's go, he's basically telling her his version of the original film, chat. She's like, oh, it's fucking amazing, John. That's great, but chat. Yeah. He is come upon by the by the cult guys, the Red Turban guys. They're there. So are uh, Baltus. He's there. He's like, uh, Jonathan, shut the fuck. Oh, no, he doesn't call him Jonathan Jack because he mistakes him. 
he mistakes him for uh, uh, Brendan Fraser. He's like, Brendan Fraser, um, listen, where is the bracelet? And Jonathan's like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know a bracelet. And he's like, I will. I'll listen, I'm a, I'm a competent villain. At least I try to be. At least at this point in the movie, I'm the most competent villain here until I'm not, until the plot demands me to be incompetent. So I'll kill you no matter what. Tell me where the fucking bracelet is or I'll make it painful. He's like, I don't know. But before you get it happen, chat, fucking Brendan Fraser busts in the room and he sees Jonathan here. He's like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> what did you do? He's like, it wasn't me. It's not my fault. And then... B bounces like ah so you you are brendan Fraser. you are the rick o'connor he's like ah, i am he's like where's the bracelet we, we need it oh it's like i'm not giving that to you uh, meanwhile chat we cut back to so now then a wrestling ensues chat wrestling starts ensuing up there we cut downstairs and uh, uh evie she was talking to alex i don't know she was fussing over him you know doing licking it was like oh, i get you clean and all that but uh then they are also come upon by uh cult members but evie She's no longer the damsel in distress, chat. She's like, fuck that. Rachel Weiss is like, listen, if I'm going to do the sequel, I'm going to be as badass as Brendan Fraser. That's what's going to happen. I mean, she kind of still is the damsel in distress in certain scenes. Chat. She's like, well, give, give me like some fight scenes and shit, okay? And they're like, okay, fine. Because, chat, both through the training of Brendan Fraser, but mostly because the plot demands it, she just automatically knows how to use, like, broadswords and just starts fighting all these guys, like, at once. Also, the guy, the Magi guy. Oh, I forgot to bring that up, chat. So, the Magi guy from the first film, he was infiltrating the uh, Imhotep burial ground with the the, the the Red Turban guys. And now he's in London to protect the O'Connor. So, he comes in. I'm like, how is everyone getting this house? Has anyone heard of locks in 1933? I guess not. He comes in there, chat. He fucking saves uh, uh, Evie and Alex. And he starts fighting. He starts fighting the volume. There's also this very large man chat. Uh, he's like the head of the turban guys. He's like the the he's like thug number one. I think he's like he's got like he's like he's got like hench, he's henchman number one. Chat. We got henchman number one, and he doesn't like the magic guy. And they start dueling. Evie, she's dueling now too. And and Alex's like, how the fuck do you know all this, mom? And she's like, I don't know. I just I just do. It just feels natural. It's like first of all, that's bullshit. It's because of her visions chat and because the plot demands it. So she's fighting up, you know, all that. We cut upstairs. Rick's fighting everybody. There's a, like there is a funny gag in this film because there is a particular red turban guy. We're just gonna call him uh, uh, the pistols. We're just gonna call him pistols. Check. He always pulls out two pistols. He's like, and he always dodges an attack, and someone behind him always gets got. And so like pistols, he throws like a fucking huge knife. Uh, Rick O'Connell fucking pulls a Jack Burton. Chat. They stole us from Big Trouble in China. Guy throws a knife. Jack Burton catch, catches it and throws it right back. And the guy's like, whoa! And he dodges chat and hits the guy in the back. And he's like, oh. The pistols, he escaped, Chad. He's going to live at least two more, at least, no, two more times. At least two more times. So, uh, all that rassle is going upstairs. A lot of gunfire chat, a lot of sword battles and everything. And they're like, okay, we, we got to get the fuck out of here. But before they can't, before they can escape, Evie, she is captured. She's captured by the Red Turban guys. And they take her to the museum, chat, The London Museum, because that's where they have Imhotep. And so everyone's like, all right, fuck, we got to go save my wife. Let's go. Again, damsel distress yet again, chat. So... We got Alex, we have uh, the Magi guy, we got good old Brendan Fraser and Jonathan. They all pile into Brendan Fraser's car, like, let's go get the wife. And that's what they're going to do, Jim. Meanwhile, we cut to the museum, and they're uh, performing the ceremony. Evie, she wakes up. They're going to use her as a little bit of a sacrifice to the good old Imhotep. They have the Book of the Dead and the Book of Life chat, again, from the original film. Um, uh, Baltus, he did... Oh, yeah, Evie recognized Baltus. Baltus, you... Baltus, the... Uh, you're you're the cult leader, but you're also the curator of the London Museum of Natural History. He's like, I am, and this is when I become incompetent because a new villain's about to enter the the scene. And so, Chad, he performs the, the ceremony. Fucking Imhotep, woo! I'm back, baby. He's excited, Chad. He fucking sees Evie. He's like, this fucking bitch. Oh, you, you, you. So he's he's very excited. But here's the thing, Chad. Is it just me, or does the CGI look worse for him? Again. There's so much more CGI in this film. I just don't think they spent enough time working on it and rendering it. He looks worse to me. I don't know. And so he's fucking resurrected. He sees Evie. He's like, whoo. But he also sees, he sees uh, Princess Aki. And he's like, oh my God, it's Princess Aki. And she's like, yeah, I'm back. Um, I, I'm Princess Aki resurrected. And he goes, I mean, kind of. You, you're resurrected as her physically, but not her soul. And she goes, I don't know what that means. Let's start smooching. They, she fucking kisses this undead thing, chat. And often, it's weird. But Emma Tuff's like, you know what, guys? I'm just so fucking happy. Uh, you know what? Hey, why don't someone tell me what year it is? And they're like, it's the year of the scorpion, uh, uh, my lord. He's like, fuck! It's the year of the scorpion. That's when the scorpion king's gonna come back. God damn it. Well, did you bring the bracelet of Anubis? And they're like, 
Got it, buddy, because during the capture of Evie chat, they also got the box. But, but chat, Alex, he has the bracelet on him, and he hid another object in there, and they thought they had the bracelet the whole time, and they opened up the fucking box, and they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Imhotep, don't be mad. Listen, we, we, we made one mistake, one mistake. We, we don't have the bracelet right now, but we know who has. He's like, you know what? I would fucking suck your essence out right here, but I'm in a good mood. Who has the bracelets? Like, this is a little kid. It's the son of, of uh, the one you hate and the man. He's like, I hate them both. All right. Hey, what make me feel really bit better, guys? Burn her alive. And they just lift fucking Rachel Weiss up, and they're about to burn her, chat. And he's laughing. Imhotep is like, this is wonderful. This, everything's coming up, Imhotep. And right before they're about to burn her alive, chat, fucking who walks in, runs in, chat, Brendan Fraser. He knocks down his wife. And he gives her like a gun, and he just starts blasting. And Imhotep is like, you, you son of a bitch, you. And they start fighting, chat. A lot of shooting going off around here. Uh, the, also, the um, the spell also woke up all the other mummies in the museum, so they start attacking. Imhotep, he gets this big old jar of sand, and he pours out his guys, like, one at a time, and all his, like, his mummy guys are back, and so they're fighting. And, uh, like, at this point, everyone's like, hey, we got Evie, we got, we got the bracelet, we got my kid, let's get the fuck out of here. So they start running out, chat. Meanwhile, Jonathan, he fucks up, and he breaks the key inside the ignition. And like, we can't use that car. What the hell are we going to do here? So uh, he goes and decides to get a big double-decker bus chat. And Brent Frazier's like, what happened? Why didn't you use my car? It's like, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. And so they all pile in the, double, uh, the, the back of the bus chat. And then the Imhotep mummies, they start b bursting out of the museum. They're chasing after. And we get a scene that, again, I think is cool on paper. But when you see it live action, it just doesn't work. Because you get shit like... The mummies are acting like... Like, I bet... Um, what's the director's name again? Steven Summers. He's like, Spider-Man is coming out in like a year, less than a year at this point. And I want my own Spider-Man scene. Like, he was like... He was vying for that directorial uh, chance to direct Spider-Man. And he lost it to Sam Raimi. He's like, I'm gonna do my version. He's like, thank God he didn't direct Spider-Man yet. Because this stuff... This does not look good. Again, so many, so many action scenes upon action scenes. They all just run together... They're not very memorable. And the ones that do stand out, they're just kind of bad or goofy. And it's the same thing here. We have mummies, like fucking CGI mummies. I, you know what? It's very... Oh, my God. I just realized this is like the mummy 19, uh, 2017 chat because doesn't the mummy attack London? Except this time, instead of a giant fucking sand face, it's just these spider mummies and they're like fucking hitting people out of the way. These rubbery CGI people go, oh, and all that shit. And they, they defeat the mummies, chat. The double-decker bus gets fucked up. It's, it's whatever. Uh... And so they, they pull over the goddamn London Bridge and like, whoo, that is that job done. And Alex goes, you know what, guys? I'm just tuckered out. I'm just going to go sit all the way in the back of the bus, just take a little nap. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. And then the fucking the Red Turban guys, they grab him, Chad. They grab him. They run off with him. Uh, Brent Fraser's like, fuck that. You're going to give me my kid back. And Brent Fraser apparently decides that I can run faster than a car. And, he, you know, he's just like, <laughs> I mean, he's doing the he's doing the Tom Cruise, like, you know, just fist pump run, Chad. Trying to get this kid. This is Brent Fraser in the best shape of his life. And he's run off this goddamn car, but they got the bridge going up, Chad. And he's like, fuck that bridge. I can outrun this thing. He goes up there, Chad's like, ah! And he, he lands him. He can't get the car. And they drive off with Alex and Rachel Weiss, she said, and Brendan Fraser doesn't want to see her sad because she's so hot. And he's like, ah, damn, we got to get my kid. We got to get my kid. It's like, okay, Magi guy, where uh, why, where are they taking him? He's like, well, they're probably going to take him uh, to all these. Uh, the, the first, I think the first place they got to go to is, um, oh, I don't even know what it's called. Cat Cants. Cot, cot, the city. It's an Egyptian city. They got to take him to an Egyptian city called Cants, Chad. Cants. And it's like, I think that's where they're going to start. I believe that's the first location. And like, fuck, we got to go back to Egypt. We got to go do this all over again. All right, fine, whatever. And so they, they you know, they pack up, chat. Meanwhile, uh, we cut to, uh, I guess, where are we at this point? Oh, yeah, I guess we cut back to Imhotep. And he's like, well, we got, we secured the, the bracelets attached to the boy. And he's like, oh, it's attached to him? Fuck. Well, um, hmm, that's going to be an issue. I'll explain that in a bit. But here's the thing. I'm just going to go ahead and smooch Prince Aki and do like a weird flashback sequence with terrible CGI. And I'll talk to you guys later. And they start smooching Chad. He keeps saying, he's like, no, you look great. But I let's work on the personality let's work on the personality okay she's like sure whatever you want whatever you want and it's like this is not it's not great all right whatever and then chat we cut to egypt and we got the whole team together and brendan fraser's like we need a plane to get us to all these locations uh we can't go to the uh the fat guy the british fat guy from the first film because he's dead he's buried right now so we got to go to a new guy and so he's gonna visit his friend izzy chat 
and uh, Izzy. Uh, oh wait, wait, are we at this point yet? Uh, no, yeah, we are. We are. So Izzy, he's he's had a rep, you know he's worked with uh, Brendan Fraser before chat. And he does not like Brendan Fraser. The first time he seems like fuck that, you know, t -t tucks tucks his tail between his legs and just runs back in his little domicile chat, locks it up. Brendan Fraser's like Izzy, come on, Ch -ch blast the goddamn door open. He's like Izzy, come on, I need your help. And he's like, listen, anytime I work with you, I get shot in the ass or I lose a limb, no thing. I have this fucking limp, my knees don't work anymore, I'm not working for you, Brendan Fraser. He's like, hey, here, 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 fine. Takes Jonathan's golden scepter, he's like, will this be acceptable? Will you take us to all these locations? He's like, ooh, don't mind if I do, and he will take that. And then he makes some uh, references to how Brendan Fraser was sleeping around with all these belly dances, these whores chat. And Rachel's wife so is like, excuse me, what were you doing? He's like, nah, that's, that was past me. Don't judge, don't judge me for what I was, judge me for what I am now. And she's like, all right, I was pretty wise. He's like, Whoo! Nailed it. Avoided that. And so, uh, Brendan Fraser's like, okay, where's the plane? Is he's like, I don't need no plane. I got it. I have the best technology available today, chat. I got a hot air balloon. That's the thing that you want right now. Zeppelins are the future. That's what he says. Zeppelins are the future, man. It's like, that is stupid. Although this is 1933. Was this the, was this the uh, disaster of the Hindenburg during this time? So it's like a little history uh, joke, a little reference there. It's not that it's kind of funny. And it's like, and Izzy's like, I know you might doubt her right now, but she's far faster than you think. And he's like, oh boy, here we go. Meanwhile, chat, we cut back uh, to the bad guys, the red turban guys. They're on a train, much better mode of transportation, all honestly. Um, and uh, like Baltus and Princess Aki, they're talking, they're going like, listen, Imhotep, his power is going to be returning. He, the Scorpion King does, because that's what they, that's what they want to do, Chad. The reason why they want the Bristle of Anubis, they, they, again, just fucking word bomb to throw at you right now. The reason why they want the Bristle of Anubis is to lead them to the location of the Great Pyramid where the Scorpion King is housed. And if they kill the Scorpion King, they get to use his army of Anubis and take over the world. And they want Imhotep to be that ruler of their world. So what do you got? Who you need to beat the rock, Chad? You need Imhotep. That's what you need. But they say, listen, He's not nearly as powerful enough as he as he needs to be. He needs that sweet essence, but he can't get it yet. He needs the fucking jars. He needs those jars or whatever the hell they are. And she's like, "Oh, don't worry. We're gonna work. We're gonna work on that." Uh, before that, the little kid, little Al, he's just talking shit. He does not care about his own safety at all. He's a little sociopath. He's like, "I don't give a damn uh, who you guys are. My dad's gonna kick your ass." And, and they're like, "No, no, no, no." Well, why don't you go ahead and talk to Imhotep? And they introduced him to Imhotep chat, and they established something like really weird. Because apparently the bracelet is able to translate Egyptian. And so he's able to understand uh, Imhotep as he's speaking English. And Imhotep's like, listen, um, so you're going to help us out, kid. The kid's like, no, nah, I'm not helping you out. Maybe I might get lost along the way. He's like, listen, I'm going I'm to be honest with you right here, okay? Um, what will happen is in five days, because you've, you've had that on, what, for about two days now? So a week. So as soon as you put that on for a week, if you're not under the Great Pyramid of the scorpion king you'll fucking wither and die like that so you gotta help us out you gotta take us this so we can save your life he's like shit fine it will tap out helping him like black he takes off his ass goes black also managed to acquire the same exact outfit that he was wearing when he when benny was his assistant chat when he sucked out the rest of the remember the guy didn't have any eyes in the tongue that's what he went after first and he's, he's like ah, i got him again he's same outfit so i don't know who his tailor is but he did a good job oh who is this who we got here Avo Sad, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying yourself. You're my Huckabear. Mm. As a style, you like to stick with apparently, man. I mean, it's good. it works for him. Definitely works for him, chat. Yeah, it makes some improvements, too. He's got like a little pop collar as well. And so, Imhotep's like, okay, great, kids on board. Uh, but I'm still, I'm still a little queasy. I'm not powerful enough. And, you know, Princess Aki's like, don't worry, babe. I got just the thing you need. I'm going to go get it. And then, shall we cut back to the, uh, the Three Stooges? And you're like, you know, it took us a while to get this thing for you right here. What did they get for him, chat? It's the fucking cursed box with the jars in it. It's where they have the books and the jars and everything else. And the, the cursed guy, he's the smart one. He's like, uh, -huh. but you know, I, I know how to read Egyptian, by the way. I read the inscription and it says, whoever shall open this box shall be cursed. And you're like, listen, you try to trick us or whatever the fuck you were trying to do. So we want more money and then you can just take the box. And they're like, Okay, you know what? We have just a thing. Come with me. And they lead him back to Imhotep, chat. And she locks him in the room, and they're fucking freaking out. And then Imhotep, he goes, boo. And he just starts scaring him, chat. And the dumbest one, the Stephen Merchant-looking guy, he's like, what do we do? What do we 
video with Princess Aki's like, just open the box, you'll be okay. And this fucking moron, despite what the curse guy was saying, say, don't open it, it's curse. He goes ahead, he opens that fucking thing up, and then Imhotep is like, ah, it's dinner time! Meat's back on the menu, boys! And just starts sucking them off, Chad, all of them, until he has that sweet essence inside of them. And Imhotep, he is fucking handsome again. Princess Aki, she starts, she, you know, she sashays her way up in there, and they start smooching. It's hot, Chad. Uh, during this time, uh, we cut to Alex, who's with henchman number one, and he's just annoying, uh, annoying the hell out of henchman number one. Henchman number one's like, I have to watch this kid. I don't want to have to do it. He's a little shit. And he's just doing, what? Are we almost there? Are, are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No! And he fucking takes a knife, chat, and almost, and he just, ah! But he misses his hand, chat. Goes right between his fingers. And the boy's like, that was fucking cool. How'd you do that? And he's like, what do you mean? I missed. And he's like, oh, shit. He was trying, he's going to stab the little kid's hand. And Alex is like, listen. I got to go take a shit. Uh, take me to the bathroom. He's like, fine. Takes him to the bathroom, chat. And he's like, I can't go when you're looking, you creep. And he's like, ah. And he leaves the bathroom area. And Alex's like, all right, now that big dumb bastard's gone. I'm going to try to get out of here, chat. Sees, opens the toilet, fucking shit, human shit and piss. He's like, gross. Flushes the chat. But he notices, oh, there's a hole out into the tracks. And so he removes the toilet. And apparently there's like a stop. There's like a, a, a pull switch for the train. Uh, to stop the train in the bathroom. And he's like, I'm going to pull that. And he stops it. And the guy was like, all right, fucking got the, they pulled the lever in the bathroom. We got to stop, boys. And he stops the train chat. And Emotep's like, that little son of a bitch, he got away. And then Alex, he's running. By the way, they also got to the ancient city of cats or whatever the hell it was. And he's running, chat. And he's getting, everyone's shooting at him. And Imhotep's like, don't shoot him. We need him. And he just fucking, he rips those guys apart. He throws them into some CGI pillars chat. And Imhotep's like, I'll get, hang back, guys. I'll get him. Alex, he's running, and he gets, like, another vision of a new a new ancient temple chat. And uh, Imhotep, he's like, ah, so now I know where you need to go next. And he does some, like, he lifts him up, even though it's clearly, like, wire work. Because you can actually see, like, where the wire is lifting his little jacket up. But it doesn't matter, chat. It, it was like, okay, okay, I guess see what you did. And so, chat, we cut back to um, our heroes. Fucking Brendan Fraser and Evie and Izzy. And they're, they're enjoying their time on the hot air balloon chat. It, go, it definitely goes faster than they think. Uh, than they than they originally thought, uh, but Evie, she's you know she's you know just traumatized because she misses her son. She just wants to hold her in her arms again, and then I guess that just kicks off another fucking vision chat, and she imagines uh, herself uh, in Egypt, and she's fighting Princess Aki from earlier, and they're going at a chat. They're they are using uh, axes and sighs and and bow staffs and katanas. It's like the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in there, chat. But uh, Princess Aki, she's better than Rachel Weiss. And then we hear what Rachel Weiss's name is, chat. She's Princess Nefertiti, the Princess Nefertiti from ancient Egypt. And now she is the, she is the daughter of the Pharaoh. And who is the Pharaoh's uh, uh, concubine, maybe wife? It's Princess Aki. And who's also there, chat? It's Imhotep. And, you know, Pharaoh's like, woo, that was hot. I mean, not, you know, weird way or anything. But who better than to guard the the embrace of Anubis than my daughter, Princess Nefertiti, and who better than to guard all this lusciousness than my new wife, Princess Aki? And they're like, yeah, sounds good. And so Pharaoh, he's hugging Princess Nefertiti, but Nefertiti, she's looking over his shoulder, and she sees Aki, and Aki and Imhotep, they just got that, they did like a slow-mo, just stare at each other like, like that kind of thing. And Nefertiti's like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's really not good. And then, chat, we get some uh, arc archive footage. Because we get some new footage when Nefertiti, she was the one who sent in the guards from the first movie, the Pharaoh's guards, to check into what's happening with the Pharaoh when Imhotep and Princess Aki start stabbing him. Because she saw the assassination happen. She sent the Pharaoh's guards in. They, She saw Princess Aki kill herself. And then she saw uh, uh, Imhotep got got. Lot of it. And then, you know, he, you know, Rachel Weiss, she goes, ah, she almost falls out of the, uh, of the, the, the air balloon chat of the Zeppelin. And they're like, ah, pull her up. And then we get to get more fucking word vomit. She says, Rick, I'm actually the reincarnation of Princess Nefertiti. You know, the, the well-known Egyptian historical figure. I know how to do all these things. I know where Alex is going to be now. Um, also, oh shit. I forgot about this other thing, chat. So apparently Rick O'Connell, fucking Christ, Brendan Fraser, he has a tattoo that we never saw before. It's like this. It's a Magi tattoo. It's like, like a, literally a scorpion tattoo that matches the, the, the scorpion of the scorpion king. And on his wrist is like a Magi symbol. And our main Magi guy is like, oh yeah, that's the symbol for like the chosen soldier of God. And Brendan Fraser's like, what? <laughs> 
like this comes out of nowhere. And you got the reincarnation of Princess Nefertiti and the chosen soldier of God, Chad, of Allah, Yahweh, all of them, Chad, all in the one. And they're all rooting for Brendan Fraser at this point. Don't bring the rock in here. We don't want, we can't, we can't smell what the rock is cooking. We don't want to smell it. So that's why we chose you, Brendan Fraser, to take him down. And so there you go. Uh, then we cut back to Alex, and he requested some water from the henchman number one. Henchman number one gives him the water, but Alex doesn't drink it, chat, because he's about to build elaborate little sandcastles for his family. And he creates this exact sandcastle, this temple of the thing that he saw before. Um, our intrepid heroes, they come to the, 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 the city of the cats, or where the hell it was, and they're like, oh, he's gone. But they found his little tie, chat. They found his little tie, and they found a perfectly like symmetrical little sand castle i mean exactly how that temple looks and then they're hopping between all these new places chat various you know uh well-known uh egyptian historical sites you know just just going through all of them at that point um where are we uh, okay yeah so and now we're i think we're in where the like we're very south of egypt i believe where the nubian empire was because it's you know it's kind of lush vegetation things and there's like a lot of waterways so i think we're very very far south and um, uh, henchman number one, he sees Alex doing all these little sim symbols and things. And he's like, ah, you're leaving breadcrumbs, little kid. And he's like, I'm going to kill you. Imhotep will let me kill you soon. Imhotep's like, we're not going to kill him yet. Don't worry, kid. Don't worry about Imhotep. He goes, wa wades out into the water. He's like, listen, I'm going to show you this fucking trick I did in the last movie. Except it's with water and not sand. And he does the whole giant tidal wave face thing. Except it's a water this time, chat. And he just basically uses the the, the, uh, the water of the Nile and goes, Bleh! and it just starts going the one direction. And Alex is like, why you did that for? And then we cut to our intrepid heroes who are on the fucking Nile, chat, in a little hot air balloon. And now they're being chased by a giant waterfall face. It's Imhotep's face, chat. And they're like, oh, God, not again. Except it's with water this time, not sand. And they try to outrun this thing, chat. But the balloon is fast. It goes fast here, chat. But it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It fucking gets got. They get taken down. They end up into the, but they do end up in the oasis. Chat. They're 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 far closer to the location of the of the rocks pyramid, the Scorpion King's pyramid, than even Imhotep. But Imhotep's like, you know, we cut back to Imhotep. The fucking riverbed is dry. He's fucking walking out. He's like, pats the little kid's head. He's like, there you go, mommy and daddy are dead. <laughs> just laughing, he's enjoying himself. And the kids are like, what? What happened? And he's sad. Hutchman's laughing at him and everything. And then uh, they go off and they head towards the oasis. We cut back to the heroes. Uh, uh, Brent Fraser's like, uh, Izzy, repair, somehow repair the Zeppelin and so we can get out of here. And Izzy's like, I don't, literally don't have any of the tools to do this. I need like a shit ton of gasoline. Do you have any gasoline at all? And he's like, no, but I'm sure you'll find some. We're in a fucking jungle. There's no gas. There's mangoes. There's coconuts. Ah, oh, whatever. And then chap, during all this confusion, Jonathan, he takes back his little golden, um, uh, scepter because it's hits. And then he goes off, chat. And they go off, and they're going to shut up base because they want to rescue their son, Alex. And meanwhile, chat, we cut back to uh, Imhotep and the rest of the Red Turban guys, and he's leading them. And they're like, they're kind of like off-put because there's something out in the wilderness, chat, that they're concerned about. They see all the, uh, the bushes rustling. Imhotep's like, don't worry about it. They won't attack me. Now, these uh, fucking schmucks, <laughs> it's going to be fun, isn't it? And so he start, keeps, keeps walking, chat. Cut back to Brendan Fraser. And Evie, and he says, listen, I'm going to go get back our son. Just cover her backs. So we're gonna, we're, I'm going to get him. And they start smooching chat. And it's like, it's like a, it's got kind of that like goodbye smooch. Like, in case I die here, because I got to fight a lot of guys of red turbans in, in, in a few minutes. So I'll see you later. Um, so him and the Magi, they go off and do their thing. Uh, Jonathan and Evie, they're going to come in from the distance just sniping these guys. Chat, like Call of Duty sniping style. Like, you can't even see me get mad when you get shot. It's like, how do you hear me from over there? It's that style of sniping. So, chat, we cut back to our uh, the bad guys and um, the cultists, the, the main... Oh, yeah, the henchman's like, listen, that little fucking shit has been annoying me. Can we kill him now? And Balt is like, okay, I'm only answering Imhotep because I've been kind of... I'm not the main villain anymore the film. I'm incompetent. Imhotep, can we kill the kid? Imhotep, he sees the pyramid. He's like, yeah, fucking kill him, but give me the bracelet. And they're like, okay, cool. And then the henchman number one, he goes back to kill the kid, chat, but he's interrupted, chat, because the, the bushes start rustling, and they hear these weird things. People get started sucked out of the bushes. And they're like, what the hell's happening? Uh, and so Baltus says, okay, guys, fan out. We're going to keep going ahead, okay? Self-preservation, but you guys see what's up. And then, chat... We have this one red turban guard guy, and he sees like a little thing that we all also everything's uh, like shrunken heads everywhere. It's clearly there's a culture, a society living here, and they love to shrink heads. And he sees like what he's like, that one's really fucking ugly. And it goes, 
Boom. And it fucking eats his face, Chad. It knobs onto his face, eats his nose, rips out his eye. He's screaming. And all these guys are start getting got by these basically little pygmy creatures. And they look terrible. They're, I mean, they're CGI, of course. And they're pretty much there both to be, I mean, scary, but also comedic. And, like, they, it never really works. I mean, there's a couple times where they do work. I shouldn't say that. There's one scene where it does work because it's, it's the guy, Pistols. Remember Pistols, chat? We'll get to that scene in a second. But they start fucking fighting all the Red Turbans guys. They, they have, like, blow darts. And they're, and they're fucking killing over because the poison's going right directly into their hearts. Dying. Uh, Brent Frazier's like, this is a good time to attack. He comes in there, he just starts blasting. He comes in there blasting, Chad, with his pistols, with his shotgun, magi guy. He's got his goddamn uh, uh, Thompson. He's, he's laying all these guys out. Uh, henchman number one's like, I'm going to fight the magi because we kind of had like a rivalry in the beginning of the movie. And they start sword fighting, Chad. They start wrestling and fighting. But magi gets the upper hand, cuts up henchman number one. We don't see any blood, which sucks because clearly like he fucking like cut him open and his guts just fell out, Chad, like that kind of thing. But he fucking keels over. Head hits the thing, he's just, blank stare, chat. And Magi goes like, hey, I just defeated my uh, boss. I'm going to go get, oh, because that's the other thing. I told all the tribes of the Magi to come here. So in case Anubis' army is resurrected, we can fight him. We can fight him until you just kill the Scorpion King. And Brendan Fraser's like, you go do you, man. Go save my kid. He's like, bye, Brendan Fraser. And they never meet again, Chad. They never meet again. Not for the reason you're thinking, but they never meet again. And so Magi, he goes off. Uh... And then Evie and Jonathan, they show up and they're fighting the pygmy people too. Jonathan gets separated by everybody. Um, there's a really funny scene where we find Pistols guy. Pistols, he's like, oh, and Jonathan and him are running side by side. And they're kind of like working together in a way. And they cross like this line of stones. And Jonathan's like, Pistols, listen, I know I just met you, but you seem like you have somewhat of a personality. Don't worry. These little pygmy people cannot cross these stones. It's cursed for them. They won't attack us. And he's like, are you sure? Are you sure, Jonathan? He's like, I'm sure, man. We're going to get pistols, me and you. We're going to get through this together. He's like, fuck yeah, Jonathan. I'm, I'm a hero now. I'm a hero in this movie now. He's like, yeah, you have you have somewhat of a personality. And then Chad, one of these pygmy guys uh, sees him. He goes, hey, and fucking runs over and fucking pole vaults, pole, pole vaults over the goddamn cursed ground. And he fucking lands on pistols and he starts stabbing, Chad. He's just stabbing. And he's like, ah! And he looks at Jonathan. He's like, sorry. <laughs> Made a mistake, and Jonathan just takes off running, and Pistols is now dead. And I love it. <laughs> I love that guy's reaction. See, that 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 actually worked. That actually worked. Uh, we also come back to Baltus chat, and he says, uh, guys, you're the only two persons left. Sacrifice yourselves. You'll be rewarded in heaven. And Baltus, he's just a comedic character at this point. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rick, he does manage to get a hold of uh, Alex, and everyone meets up. The whole team meets up. Fucking Baltus. Um, uh, Princess Aki and Motep, they headed towards the, the pyramid. They're, they're already they're already there at this point, yet. And Alex is like, and they're like, whoo, got you bad, Alex. But he's like, no, 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 we have to get to the pyramid, like, right now, because if I, if, you know, if, if I don't, before sunrise, if we don't get there before sunrise, I will die. And, and fucking Brent Frazier's like, fuck, oh, goddamn, this is leg day. And he fucking picks up the kitchen, and he just starts booking it. Like, he, he's doing a Tom Cruise run towards that temple with little Alex. And first of all, he's outrunning the sun, <laughs> which doesn't make any goddamn sense. Angelo Jones, welcome to the stream. I'm just talking about Brendan Frazier literally outrunning the sun. And he does it, Chad. He fucking ah, he throws himself in the pyramid, gets into the shade of the pyramid, Chad. Alex's like, good job, Dad. And Brendan Frazier just can't fucking breathe. He's like, I'm going to get fat the rest of my life. And Brendan Frazier accomplished that, Chad. He certainly did. So... The, the, the Anubis bracelet just pops off. Alex goes, fuck that. And he throws it away, Chad. He throws it away. We see Jonathan and Evie in the distance. And they're going, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Alex is okay. Brent Frazier is like, he's okay, Evie. We're a family again. Evie's like, oh, that is great. You know what? And then fucking Princess Aki comes in. Just stop, 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 stop. Stabs her in her tummy, Chad. Like repeatedly in the tum-tum. And she's like, ah. And she, it's, like a, it's like a Game of Thrones moment. Except not as good. And she fucking goes down. Princess Aki and Imhotep's like, mm-hmm, my bit. Oh, by the way, uh, this is I forgot earlier in the film chat. So pause on this scene. Pause on this, this traumatic scene. Early in the film, where we're at the city of the cats, Imhotep says, okay, you know what? You've been great, weird goth lady who looks like my love. But I'm going to put the soul of my love in your body now and kill your your regular soul if you don't mind she's like fuck yeah let's do it babe and she's like all right and that's what happens chat so the old soul uh who was in the body prince aki is dead and then prince aki gets certainly hurt very fucking weird very weird and i thought that was a little mm. i was like hmm okay so i guess the original prince aki is now in the new body 
whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, then Chad, fucking Rachel Weiss, like, ah, my insides are coming out. <laughs> and, you know, Brent Frank, he's fucking selling this, chat. He is blubbering. <laughs> he is, like, he literally, he is, he's doing a good job here, chat. I, I bought the emotion that Brendan Fraser was, you know, giving to this scene, because that's not my biggest problem with this film, is that other than the stuff when he's with Rachel Weiss and it's super cute and charming, because you, you feel like they, they, they have chemistry. You know, like, they actually feel like, wow, you actually feel like a married couple. And I like, I wanted more of that shit. There wasn't enough of this, because there's so many action scenes. Action scene after action scene after action scene. There's not more of this. And he's just crying over it, and she just dies. She just dies. He's like, I am mad. I'm, and he just like, all right, I'm ter full Terminator Brendan Fraser mode. I'm gonna go kill all of them right now. Jonathan, take care of Alex. I'm gonna, I'm gonna goddamn show them what I'm cooking. They're gonna smell what I'm cooking. He goes in there, chap. And then Jonathan and Alex are like, this is fucked up, isn't it? Um, then we cut back to our villain chat. Also, um, the Baltus, he picks up the Anubis bracelet and he puts that on. He's like, ooh, this looks nice. And he goes in the temple too. Imhotep, you know, fucking, he's just swinging his big dick around. He's like, I am the best shit ever. And he passes down this precipice chat, these big old Anubis statues. He's like, these look great. And he's got all, all his essence chat is just sucked out of his body. He's like, that was uncomfortable. And he's like, I, I feel weird. And he tries to use his mummy power chat. He's like, ah. Bob is like, oh, kind of, kind of moving it a little bit. And he's like, oh my God, Anubis sucked all of my powers away. How fucking convenient. Apparently, he wants me to fight the Scorpion King as a goddamn human. Great. And, and Richard Ackie's like, listen, let's, let's not do this now. Let's, you know, let's plan. He's like, no, nah, I gotta do it. Not nah, fucking do it, honey. I'm gonna go ahead and fight him. And he fucking, they start smooching chat. He's like, I'll see you later. And he starts running right towards the big old gong. He's gonna summon the rock with chat. Meanwhile, cut back to Brent Fraser. He's just looking fucking crazy at this point. Just like a big old axe. And then we cut outside. And Jonathan, he's trying and failing to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically make uh, Alex feel better. You know, you're trying to comfort Alex, Chad. And, you know, as we all know at this point, Alex is a fucking sociopath. He feels nothing. But he realizes based on, because uh, Jonathan mentions, you know, the, you know what the good book always says? He's like, the book, the book, you're a genius, Uncle Jonathan, because they have the book of the dead, Chad. And what does the book of the dead do? It gives them life. It gives a dead body life. And so they go ahead, they bring in uh, 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 fucking Rachel Weiss. And because uh, now they're going to go get the book from Princess Aki, Chad. Meanwhile, we, we uh, cut to uh, Baltus who's just, again, just super incompetent. And he's like, my job is to activate the army of Anubis. He goes to this big old scorpion statue, sticks his hand in there with the bracelet, and it fucking, you know, sucks it in. He's like, oh, fucking, I guess it's working. All the lights in the pyramid turn on and everything. Uh, outside, we see the Magi army uh, amassing around the oasis, and we see this really terrible CGI shadow also amassing. And all the fucking little Anubises pop up, chat. All the jackals. And they're like, fuck, that's a lot of Anubises. And they gotta have to fight them, chat. It's gonna be a hell of a battle. And then, uh, uh, um, fucking Brendan Fraser, he finds Baltis like, hi, I've, I've summoned them, Brendan Fraser. There's nothing you can do. Brendan Fraser's like, I'm gonna kind of axe you now. And he's like, no, don't. But then before he could do that, to be working in the axe of chat, fucking Baltus just starts screaming. He hears something like crunching and munching on his arm. And he pulls his arm out. And this fucking scared me when I first saw this as a kid. It's like, he has like a skeleton arm, but it's like super gooey. And he's like, oh, oh. And Brendan Fraser's like, he, Brendan Fraser's like, huh. He smiles and laughs. Now that's the only thing that brings him joy was to see this old man with a fucking gooey skeleton arm, chat. And he goes off. Fucking uh, Baltus, he's freaking out because he has a skeleton gooey arm now. And he fucking keels over into a giant, like, uh, fucking lake of, I don't know, like a, it's like a fountain filled with um, uh, scorpions. And they munch on him and they eat him, Chad. He's dead. Baltus is gone. And then we cut to uh, uh, Brendan Fraser and he sees Imhotep. He's bare on this big old gun, Chad. He's trying to summon the old scorpion. Came over. He's like, fuck that. I'm going to kill this guy. He's got all the axes, Chad. He's ready to get him. But before. And anything can start happening. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, 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 yeah. Because Imhotep, uh, he anticipates Brendan Fraser and he goes, ah, and they start dueling, chat. They start dueling, like, duel the fates and everything. But they, but Imhotep has already done so many gone dons at this point that the fucking doors to the Scorpion King open and Brendan Fraser and Imhotep go, Whoa! and then out walks one of the most infamous CGI creatures in cinema chat. And the first thing, I mean, it's, it's, fuck, it's the rock. With a with all CG, all CG with a with a scorpion legs and body, and the first thing it does is <sighs> is that it does the fucking eyebrow and smirk. 
that he does from the WWE. It's like, are you fucking serious? Oh my god. <laughs> mm, you smell what I'm cooking? It's like, oh my god. <laughs> It's embarrassing, chat. It's embarrassing. That Jumanji smolded, except that it's better in Jumanji than it is here. It's not good here, that I can tell you. And they're like, wow, that looks hideous. We gotta fight this thing. And then Imhotep, he's, he's a little bitch, Chad. He's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm here to serve you. I'm your humble servant, Mr. Rock. And the Rock's like, yeah, we'll fucking see. And Imhotep's like, oh, that guy over there, he, he came here to kill you. He definitely wants to kill you, man. Also, um, Rick oh, but before this chat, I forgot. <sighs> so fucking convenient. Uh, Rick O'Connell, he comes upon a series of murals with the exact, with, on the wrist of this one guy who is holding the scepter, the gold scepter that Jonathan has, which so happens to be the fucking spear that you need to kill the Scorpion King with. He sees on the mural, it has the same exact tattoo as, as he does. And he's like, oh, that's convenient. And he sees like what to do in each mural. So that's me. That's me getting the spear open. That's me about to throw the spear, and that's the rock dead because he has the spear inside him. And it's like, got it. We'll do that in the next few minutes. But Brendan Fraser at this point, he's just running away from the rock chat because the rock and CGI, it's, it looks terrible. And he's jumping, and the rock's bleh. And the rock has no lines in here. I mean, he has some, but it's it's mumbled, garbled. Mo he's like fucking Nemesis, Chase. He's like the Nemesis, except not as cool. And he's going over Brendan Fraser. Meanwhile, we cut back to... Jonathan, and Jonathan gets the book from Princess Aki, and uh, he gives it to Alex because he speaks Egyptian, I guess. And he fuck and Rachel Weiss is back. She, she's, she runs she right from the dead. She has all of her Nefertiti powers at this point, chat. And then her and Princess Aki have a rematch, chat. Remember when, like, 3,000 plus years ago when they first fought? Now they get that fucking rematch. And Princess Nefertiti, known as Rachel Weiss, kicks Princess Aki's ass, chat. Didn't stand a chance. And so she's fucking down. Not dead, but she's down. Um... Meanwhile, I think we... Oh, yeah, then uh, while Brendan Fraser, he's hopping around, he's like, Jonathan, the scepter is the spear to kill the scorpion king. Get it open. He's like, what? And Because Jonathan can't hear shit. And he's like, just, oh, God, it's a comedic bit in the film. Fuck. Okay, just do it. And he fucking does it, chat. He gets it. He's like, all right, I'm going to fucking do it. Jonathan, he's like, he's going to kill the scorpion king, chat. He's actually going to be competent. He fucking chucks his fucking thing. It's going right for the Scorpion King. And then Imhotep goes, yoink! And he takes that. She's like, oh, thank you so much. And then he fucking winds up. Chad goes, bah! And he throws at the Scorpion King. And then Brent Bridger goes, yoink! And he takes it. <laughs> and so Imhotep's like, ah, damn it! <laughs> Got bamboozled. I, I, that doesn't feel good. I, I felt good when I did it to him. It doesn't feel good what's happened to me. And fucking Brent Frazier, he stabs the rock in his tum-tum chap. Also, there's like weird, it's like a crevasse. All these terrible CGI bodies going, like all that. I guess it's like hell. The Egyptian hell. I don't know. Uh, he stabs the rock and he says, I, I want you and all your bastards to go to hell. And the rock's like, okay. And he fucking explodes in the, in the like, shadow mist chat. And then Nubis Army, remember the Magi are fighting them? They're getting their ass kicked at this point, chat. They're all dying. But it's like PG-13 violence. So you don't see anyone die, really. The Nubis Army's defeated, chat. And then it creates this fucking weird typhoon. You see CGI rock going, Ugh! like, weird mist and then he gets sucked back in the pyramid he's in a reverse shot pretty much and then the pyramid starts to crumble as what happens at the end of everything chat after every mummy movie or indiana jones film when you remove the sacred object the fucking temple pyramid whatever starts to crumble <laughs> now it's time to get out of there but before everyone starts to get out chat uh fucking brendan fraser imhotep they're they're on the crevasse and they're holding up your dear life because the weird zombie people they're just trying to grab them they're trying to wrestle them down chat and, you know, uh, Evie's like, fuck that. I got to go get my man. What he just did was so hot. And I mean, I just want him to put the babies in me right now. I got to get him to do that. And so she runs over there, chat. She fucking pulls Brendan and Frazier out. Imhotep's like, that is so cool. Aki, can you get me? And she's like, fuck no. And she heads out, chat. <laughs> and then we see the, we see the moment. When his soul dies, <laughs> when Imhotep's soul breaks, because he's got water in his eyes, he's like, oh, <laughs> and he looks over at Brendan Fraser, and this is like his moment, he's like, 
Yeah, I get. It. I think at that moment he realized like, what a piece of shit he's been. Like just in this one scene, I'll give him this. I'll give Vanderloo whatever his name is. This he sold this scene because he looks over at Brendan Fraser and Rachel Vice. Thank you, Bat Shields. Welcome to stream. Just got off work, of course. I gotta watch Mr. Herman. Thank you, Bat Shields. Just reviewing my review for the Mummy Returns. Almost done. Almost done, you guys. So, thank you again for the uh, ten minis. Uh, and so, uh, Emotab, he looks up and he's like, you know what, you guys are a cute couple. Fuck me! And he just gets, he just accepts death chat. He gets sucked down to hell. The bodies start fighting over him. They start grabbing him. It's weird and gross. Uh, we cut to Princess Aki. She's like, I get the fuck out of here. I get, I'm, no, not, I'm not dying. She fucking does a comedic slip. She goes, uh, <laughs> I love it. Because she comes to the fucking ocean, the fountain of scorpion shit. And she goes, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. And she tumbles in. They all eat her up. They all gobble her up, chat. And then... Our heroes, they like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Everything's getting sucked inside the pyramid. They go outside, all the o oasis being destroyed. Little pygmy people are going, Meh. they're all very upset, chat. So, like, we gotta get to the top of the pyramid. They get to the top of the pyramid, chat. There's like, there's nowhere to be seen, either direction. There's nothing, nothing around us. Oh, I guess this is it, guys. This is done. This will be the last film. But then who shows up, chat? It's Izzy in his Zeppelin. He somehow found gasoline in a jungle. Sure. And he's like, I gotta work it, everybody. Come on on. They start piling on him. But Jonathan, he sees a big old fucking diamond, a hawking diamond, bigger than his head. He's like, I want that. Give it to me. And he takes that diamond, chat. And he's like, pull me up, you bastards. And they pull him up, chat. And everyone starts hugging. Everyone's like, whoo, what an adventure. And then we get the bickering between Jonathan and Izzy because Izzy's upset because he stole, because Jonathan stole the golden scepter. But... Brent Frazier, Evie, and Alex, they don't care about that. They're family again, and they're just hugging, and Brent Frazier and Rachel Weiss, they're smooching chat. And it ends on a nice sunset, as the which apparently which is weird. It's a sunset chat, even though it literally was like dawn not an hour ago. So a little confused by that, how much time passed in the pyramid. It was like over 24, like what, 12 fucking hours? That's a lot of time. I'll be exhausted. And chat, they just go off into the distance. We don't know what happened to the Magi guy. I guess he's like, all right, see you guys. Never going to see you again. And that chat is The Mummy Returns. Um, as I said before, not nearly as good as the first film. It just doubles down on the elements that I think were the weakest elements of the, of the original movie, which is the CGI. Uh, you know, uh, it was, it, there's too much of it, and it's like, it's not good. It's like, I think it's even worse than the original film because there's so much more, they didn't have time to render all that shit. And just the exposition on top of exposition on top of exposition. Like, my favorite parts, the character bits in this film were between Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss. Well, like, not when they're doing, like, I, when I, I'm the resurrection person, I'm none of that shit. Just when they're fucking smooching and they're having the back and forth, that, that rapport chat. That's my favorite parts of the film. But I, I'm thankful it's a two hour film, but it moves, it, it has a, a very fast pacing, almost relentless. Unrelentless. And so I guess I would give it a high rental. Like, I mean, watch if you want to, but it's not nearly as good as the original mummy. You know? That's just me, Joe. I would give it a high rental on the DT, the double-toasted scale. Mm.